Hi, welcome back to part two of this video um, duo, shall we say, um, responding to a poll I did on daily sunscreen wearing behaviour on my Facebook group. Now, so much to talk about and I'm sure that by the time this one goes out there'll be an awful lot of comments that have come on from the first one, so who knows, it may even be a part three. Um, so I think daily sunscreen use, I talked about how I approach it, why I think once is okay for every day and how I think about it as being part of an anti-aging routine. And I think about it as being the first step in an anti-aging routine. Um, I do find it staggering when people tell me they're happy to spend money on serums and eye products, but don't actually um, build daily sunscreen into their everyday um, skincare routine because it's just bonkers, isn't it? I mean, 90% of why our skin changes with wrinkles, pigment sagging is due to UV exposure, probably to some extent also pollution um, and visible light. But the main crux of why we age is free radical damage from UV exposure and that's 90% of it, um, daily sunscreen is just so obviously the first anti-aging step any of us should take. And I think the other interesting thing about wearing sunscreen every day, um, there are a lot of reasons why people object to doing it, and a lot of that comes down to formulation, and a lot of that comes down to not quite knowing how correctly to use it to get the maximum benefit out of it. So I think the great thing about um, Facebook groups and forums and the like means that so much more information is being shared. Um, the quarter of a teaspoon measure really does help guide you in how much to use. And we've touched on how to, you know, to deal with the issue of reapplication. Um, uh, so I thought I would just carry on with more of the same because, as I said, there seems to be so much to talk about. Um, so let's get started. The first question is, which ingredients should I be looking for in my sunscreen. Um, now, when we're talking about everyday sunscreen, as we mentioned in the first video, UVA protection is what's really important. Now, there are a number of different agents that give UVA protection. You may have heard of Mexeril, you may have heard of Avabenzone, Tinasorb, um, but to my mind, the best option in terms of both cosmetic elegance, in terms of its suitability for sensitive skin, um, and its tendency not to block pores is zinc oxide. And it can now be formulated in such a way that it doesn't really leave any kind of white cast on the skin at all, um, and it's properly micronized. Um, but in terms of stability, when exposed to UV light, which is very important if you're not planning on reapplying your sunscreen again, um, and in terms of its suitability for under makeup and for its tendency not to block pores, I think zinc oxide is a great ingredient to look for um, when it comes to your daily sunscreen. The next question is, um, I only wear sunscreen when I'm going out in the sun for a while, short walk up the shops, no need, um, is this enough? I think not, and the reason is the UVA story, as I said before, boringly, it's around all day, every day, it doesn't disappear in winter, and it comes through glass, so that means if you're driving around in your car, in the bus, um, you're going to be exposed to UVA rays, and they penetrate more deeply into the skin, that's why they have an effect on our collagen and our elastin production, our hyaluronic acid production in our skin, so it's really just not worth taking the risk, if you're going to invest in your skincare, um, put the right foundations in place and do this simple step that really will reap rewards. We now know from clinical studies that I think there's a feeling that when you put sunscreen on it's really passive, you're just blocking um, it from going downhill in the future. But it turns out that actually wearing sunscreen daily allows the skin to free up resources to repair and renew um, in a more specific way. So we know that skin can repair itself, but if it's busy fighting off the effects of daily ultraviolet bombardment, um, it doesn't have that same capacity. So regular sunscreen use not only stops damage from happening in the future, but also allows skin to repair, meaning fewer wrinkles and better texture when you commit to this habit over time. If that's not incentive enough, I don't know what is. The final question I wanted to answer is what happens if I do under apply it? Now, um, I can answer this because I saw a recent study which investigated this very point. Um, if you apply a half the desired quantity of two milligrams per centimeter squared or a quarter, um, 
do you get half or quarter of the number of SPF? And the, the answer is yes, it decays linearly, not exponentially. So if you're wearing an SPF 30 every day and you only put half the required amount on, you're gonna get about SPF 15. Um, the problem is we don't know the answer for UVA protection. So um, whilst that might be helpful in terms of preventing sunburn, it doesn't really tell us how much UVA is getting through over the course of a single application in a professional person's life when they're going to their office and not putting it back on again. Hopefully that information will become available soon because I think, you know, we all have to take responsibility for our own behaviour, but it's easier to know when you are and aren't protected when you have the information available to you. But I do think it's a start knowing that half the quantity gives you half the SPF. And in fact, that is part of the argument for wearing higher protection factors. So um, a lot of dermatologists in the US believe that there should be categorization when the SPF is higher than 50, because an SPF 70 or an SPF 100 will give you extra protection. So lots of interesting stuff coming out about sunscreen behaviour, um, but I still think the important thing to take away from all this dialogue um, are the facts that we know daily sunscreen use makes us age less quickly. Um, we know that it should be applied in a specific amount to give us the number promised on the tube. Um, and if we're not reapplying it again, it's important to manage our UV exposure accordingly. Um, remember, sunscreen is really only one part of the sun protection triad of seeking shade and covering up. So it's all three of those behaviours together that give us the best protection from ultraviolet. Ultimately, my advice would be to find the sunscreen that you like using best. This is the single most important thing to take away because that's the one you're going to apply generously and it's the one that you won't mind reapplying um, if you are in direct sunlight. I hope that was helpful guys. It's a big topic, lots to cover and I look forward to reading your questions down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't and you like this content. Bye for now.